Raiders running back Zamir White is one of the biggest winners of the offseason. He is officially a dynasty sleeper. We will explain why on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $200 if your bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. It's a Wednesday episode, so of course that means Matt Williamson is here. Check him out on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Go check out his new YouTube channel as well. On today's show, we are discussing the biggest free agent news coming out of the last week or so. And I want to start with Zamir White with the Raiders because Josh Jacobs left to sign with the Green Bay Packers. And the only running back they have since brought in is Alexander Madison, which is not a lot. Uh, Matt, I want your thoughts on Zamir White. Is this somebody that we can actually like get excited about and trust in our dynasty leagues? Yeah, I think we're getting to that point. I mean, the best news we got, kind of as you mentioned, is all they've done is Madison. And I could see maybe a day three pick being in the, the Raider backfield, but I don't think that's a massive obstacle for White. He looked really good at the end of the year. The right side of their offensive line is far from ideal, to be honest with you, but it does look like that could get a little boost in you know the draft, potentially, maybe even in the first round. Um, I don't think they're going to draft running back high at all because they've so many defensive needs in the back seven, as well as some O-line stuff. Who knows what's going on with quarterback? That seems like that's maybe next year's project, but I mean, it's not, um, I, I don't think running back is going to be a high priority for them come draft time. So kind of by default, he falls into a really, really good situation. And I don't think Madison is much of an obstacle whatsoever. No, I don't think he's much of an obstacle either, Matt. And what's really interesting is they haven't really added anybody to this backfield uh, outside of Madison. And I, I don't mm-hmm. get the sense that because of how many needs they have, that they're going to just go out and draft anybody either. I, th- this right. is a Raiders team that is uh, pretty limited on resources. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. I I want to get your thoughts on where he should be drafted and ranked among dynasty running backs like for you is he a top 20 guy do you think he's Mm. worse than that what do you think I would say worse I mean I I don't have the list in front of me and you running backs dry up pretty quick honestly um I do there's something to be said for can he carry the workload I mean can he get enough touches through the course of a season and hold up have that mentality have that toughness to really be an every week starter and be a dynasty asset. I think that's like his last hurdle is, you know, can he be the guy, you know, I mean, Emmett Smith out there with one shoulder that doesn't work, you know, I mean, yeah. can, yeah. you know, drag you through the end of games, that type of thing. I think he's a good enough receiver that he's, you know, pr- pretty game, you know, the game script doesn't kill him if they're winning big no. or if they're losing no. big, you know, he'll probably still be in the mix. So that part I like, it just, and I'm not even being critical. It's just we just haven't seen him be a bell cow yet. So I want to mention his dynasty value. He okay. is currently being drafted. We just got some some recent ADB, ADP from Dynasty League Football. RB43 right now. That seems incredibly low. Incredibly low, yeah. Is that so, factoring in the rookies or not? Yeah, that's factoring in the rookies. Okay. I mean, there's probably a handful of rookies I would take over him still, you know, and not knowing where they're going to land, but well, that's let, incredibly low. Let, let me run through some guys that are like borderline top 20 running backs right now. And I want your thoughts like okay, Ramondre Stevenson in New England, who was on the final year of his deal. Boy, I've been such a Stevenson fan and last year didn't go to script. And I still think Gibson is a problem. You, you should know, I should know this, but is Zeke Elliott a free agent or is he yes. a patriot as we speak? He, okay, he a, is on the market. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that one's close for me. 
That one's close. I think I'd still lean Stevenson with the hope that their offense is actually functional in New England going forward. All right, Kate, I got one for you. Zamir White or Brian Robinson, who is currently being drafted as RB22 in Dynasty Leagues? I'm actually probably going to go Zamir White here, and I'm really shocked by that because I do think there's like a, a very real possibility that, you know, Brian Robinson – totally dominates touches this year and could be, you know, just a, a fixture in this offense. But I do think that one of Brian Robinson's biggest issues in terms of, of fantasy value, in terms of dynasty value in reaching his ceiling has been his lack of involvement as a receiver. I think bringing in Austin Eckler only magnifies that tenfold for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the upside of Zemir White. I just don't think this threat of Alexander Madison is enough. And I mean, Marcus, you are the managing editor for Raiders wire. So you're <laughs> kind of in the digs here with the Raiders. I'm kind of curious because there were reports that came out that said like, they want to use this three back system. How much are you buying into that? Cause same coaching staff last year. And when we didn't have Josh Jacobs, it was all Zamir white all the time. I think they're going to bring in some sort of passing down back. Like last mm. year was Amir Abdullah, somebody of that ilk, right? But it, it's not, I'm not shying away from Zamir White. I know Ra the Raiders felt internally the last four games of the season when Zamir White started, they didn't really see a drop off between White and Josh Jacobs. And I think they're really excited to see what Zamir White can do in a full-time role. He's going into year three, but because he hasn't had a lot of touches in the first two years of his career, and even going back to Georgia, like didn't get a ton of work at Georgia because they had just so many quality running backs. They feel like he's only ascending as a player. So right now, I, and I know the ADP is a little bit out of whack as a you know, RB 43. I do think he is a, a trade target for me. Uh, Matt, the, the last thing I wanted to ask you before we move on, Josh Jacobs in Green Bay. That's obviously somebody the Raiders did not bring back. Um, how high are you on him in Dynasty? Because he did get a multi-year contract. He's He is in a really good offense, being drafted as RB14. Does that sound about right for you? I think so. I mean, I expect him to get a massive workload. I'm happy that he changed teams, as you're familiar with. And this was more of a Gruden thing. He has not caught as many passes in the NFL no. as I expected coming out of Bama. I mean, he's a good receiver, and that seems like it's an untapped resource with Jacobs. So maybe a new team will throw him the ball a little bit more. I was happy A.J. Dillon came back because I think A.J. Dillon's pretty bad, to be honest with you. And, and I would rather A.J. Dillon be the competition than a third-round pick or something along those lines. So, yeah, I'm in on Jacobs, and I also think they'll, they'll boost their offensive line in the draft a little bit. Kate? Okay. I'm actually, I'm really, really bullish on Josh Jacobs here, mm. just especially considering the fact that, I mean, if you guys are long-term listeners of Locked on Dynasty here, you've heard Marcus and I glowing about this Packers offense literally all offseason long. Like, so impressive, the level of efficiency that they were able to reach in year one. I think that this is going to be the best offense that Josh Jacobs has ever played on in his career. And I do think that that's definitely going to speak volumes for like the areas of efficiency where that's been lacking pretty significantly in his game. We've seen, you know, involvement from Aaron Jones historically as a receiver. I think Jacobs can dip into that a bit as well. I don't like myself some aging running backs, but I do think among all of these aging running backs, I kind of like the situation for Josh Jacobs, probably the best. Yeah. I'm also really bullish on Josh Jacobs. I'm also bullish on Saquon Barkley. So I'm curious to see how these veteran running backs play out this season. All right. Let's talk about Mike Williams who officially signed with the New York jets on Tuesday. What kind of impact will he have on Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, and what is his dynasty value? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance 
from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. On March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern, be the first to get local insights from the MLB local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, Matt, I want to ask you about Mike Williams, who was kind of the last big name free agent wide receiver on the market. He had visits set up with Carolina, Pittsburgh, among among other teams, signed with the New York Jets. Let's first start with his dynasty value. Does he have any left? I think so. I mean, from a personal perspective, I was really hoping he would at least make his trip here to Pittsburgh and pair him with Pickens. That's what I was kind of hoping for, for the Steelers, you know, second receiver issue right now. There's all kinds of rumors about them being in the trade market. I'm a Mike Williams fan, and especially for Dynasty, because most of our Dynasty rosters have plenty of wide receiver spots. So if he is going to be injured a fair amount, which I do think is something that's real with him the way he plays he goes up and gets a football the way he lands he takes a lot of hits he's a big body that I do think durability is a legit concern with him but on dynasty rosters most of us have what 10 12 wide receivers on our roster and can weather you know him being out for a couple weeks or whatever and he's not a wide receiver one I do think he's a really good player he's a little older than people might realize yeah I think he's almost 30 I think he's 29 off the yeah. top of my head yep. yeah so and I don't know if this is fair or not but I don't really trust the Jets organization <laughs> I mean it just seems like things never go to plan and it always goes the wrong way not the good way with New York and I also think there's a good chance that they take Brock Bowers with the 10th overall pick too would that hurt Williams I mean it certainly wouldn't help him. But no, I think he has dynasty value. I, I, I wish he was on my roster. Kate, what do you think? Here's the thing with Mike Williams. So for so long, we have been praying that he becomes the wide receiver one that the, the Chargers drafted him to be for our dynasty rosters. And that never really came to fruition, right? There's a lot of upside, a lot of big plays, a lot of inconsistency. And yes, they like injuries have been a thing. And because of his big body, because of the, the play style, those are things that come to fruition. So like you look at the the overall box score, he doesn't miss a ton of games per se, but he does come in and out of the lineup just with various bumps and bruises, we'll say. But what makes Mike Williams, I think, so palatable specifically right now is the price tag because I think we're going to get a lot of that boom-bust production. I think we're going to get a lot of that upside, especially lining up opposite you know, Garrett Williams, like I, uh, like, I, I think this Garrett Wilson, Garrett Wilson yeah. um, I think, th I think there's a lot of upside here and guess what? Now you don't have to pay Mike Williams prices for Mike Williams production. When we were drafting him as a top 10 dynasty receiver, yes, Mike Williams and the, the kind of production he gives you on any given week is not a, a exciting prospect. Mike Williams at the price tag of wide receiver 68 suddenly doesn't look so bad for a guy who yes is 29 coming off a torn ACL but they, I do think the upside is ginormous especially if we have a, a healthy Aaron Rodgers what's so difficult about this Mike Williams situation is in the game that he got hurt last year he was having a monster game he was like 120 <laughs> yards and two touchdowns like we all know how talented Mike Williams is it's, it's just can he stay healthy I don't mind 
I, I don't mind the fit and I certainly don't mind the price. Like, believe it or not, Demario Douglas, Rashid Shahid, uh, Ricky Pearsall, Tyler Lockett. Like these are all guys that are going ahead of Mike Williams right now. So it, it costs you nothing to get him. And maybe there's just a chance that this Jets offense is way better than any of us, uh, any of us anticipate. Like they, they fix their offensive tackles. Hopefully Aaron Rodgers is back. Like Matt, would it be shocking to you if the Jets had a top 10, top 12 offense this year? And they don't, they don't have a tight end yet that they have to funnel targets to. They don't have a number two receiver that they have to give targets to. Why couldn't Mike Williams theoretically average seven to eight targets a game when he's healthy? I think it's very possible. I just think it's a little bit of a fragile environment, and I, I don't really trust ownership coaching staff and with that organization. And Rodgers and both the tackles that you mentioned are very old, to be very honest with you. And I, I don't know that all three of them are going to give us 17 games. So should they take a tackle in the first round and groom them, or should they take a Brock Bowers and go for broke? I mean, I think they'll probably do the latter. Um, I threw it out on Twitter. I mean, are the Jets the best team in the East? I know that's mm. not a dynasty question, but I could paint a picture where they are. The Bills and Dolphins are getting crushed with free agency and go in the wrong direction. And if Rodgers can stay healthy, might the Jets be a 12-win team led by Rodgers? I could paint that picture. I just don't trust it. Is there any doubt, though, Matt, that the Jets have the best roster in the uh, the division? I'm not saying they're the best team because I right. whenever Buffalo has a healthy Josh Allen, like I'm just going to pick them to win 10 games mm-hmm. every year. But you look at, like, if you compare all four rosters to one it's another, one. I, pretty yeah, easily, right? I think so. I think that's well said. That's a good way of looking at it. Kate, what do you think about this Jets team and Mike Williams specifically? I definitely think that this was a a good fit for Mike Williams because he doesn't have to come in and be the number one. And guys, I'm just t- I'm saying like you look at the number of wide receivers that you roster in a dynasty league. Matt, you you mentioned that previously. You are going to roster plenty of wide receivers, and part of what you need in a dynasty league is depth. If you have a couple of just really solid contributors at you know wide receiver one, wide receiver two, I do think Mike Williams comes in in this Jets offense, which I agree, like on paper, this is the best team in the AFC East. On paper, they actually have to you know translate that into reality and winning football games, but there's a lot of scoring potential and upside here. So you pair all the circumstances that, you know, the the Jets building that offensive line, the the talent that they're setting Aaron Rodgers up to play with, the the you know, should open things up theoretically for a guy like Mike Williams to make some big plays. This situation might have been the perfect landing spot on both ends that you know, Mike Williams if he's active, you can probably just set him up in your flex spot. You might have some down weeks, but he's not going to lose you any weeks because you're not paying top end draft capital to acquire him anymore. The more uh, the three of us talk real fit. quick, the, the 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 more we talk through this, the more I'm buying. To be honest with you, <laughs> I mean, if I, if I only get ten games out of him this year, I think he's very startable. I mean, he could win you a week here and there when he explodes. Uh, I think I'm in on him more and more the as we talk through this. All three of us in agreement on Mike Williams. This rarely happens that we all agree on something. (laughs) This is awesome. Uh, Let's talk about Justin Fields, the the newest quarterback for Kate and Matt Steelers. Does he have any, and I mean any, dynasty value left? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book right now. New customers can get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first, if your five dollar bet wins. Right again, that's two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first five dollar bet wins. You can use that two hundred dollars on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who you think is going to win the entire tournament. Just visit fanduelcom locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Every day is on tomorrow's show. Kate and I are breaking down Michael Penix, quarterback from Washington. We're going to give you his updated dynasty value, some player comps, his strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so make sure you tune in for that. But let's finish up the show talking about Justin Fields, who was recently traded from the Bears to the Steelers. We heard that Russell Wilson is expected to be the starter. Justin Fields is going to be the backup competing for snaps. Matt, I want to know for you, does Justin Fields have any dynasty value left? Oh, I think so. I mean, certainly Superflex is something you're not getting rid of him or even considering cutting him. So there were five similar quarterbacks that were starters young that were traded. I mean, Pickett and Howe and Mac Jones and Ritter and Fields. He's clearly the most valuable for fantasy of those, in my opinion. I mean, I think he's ahead of Sam Darnold, Gardner Minshew. I mean, some guys that are slated to start that could lose their jobs any minute now. Stidham, I mean, he's ahead of those guys for me. You mentioned you guys are going to break down Michael Penix tomorrow. I would say the top six rookies I would put ahead of Fields, but not the Spencer Rattlers of the world yet, mm -hmm. you know, so... I'm not exactly sure where that lands him in the quarterback land, but it's probably. Well, can I give you some quarterbacks that are being drafted like late twenties, like Will Levis? Yeah, would yeah. You, would you rather have Will Levis or Justin Fields? I think Levis. Okay. What about Bryce Young? Young, but I don't think Young is good. <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, don't. Aaron Rodgers at QB twenty-seven. That's a total. What's my roster look like? Makeup. Do I need to start him this year or not? Okay, so you're looking at like late 20s, early 30s for Justin. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet he's in my top 30, but not definitely not in my top 22 or so. Kate, what do you think? I do think that like w if we're going to draw a line in the sand, Michael Penix is probably my line in the sand. I'll take Justin Fields over Michael Penix. And that's that's probably right about where I'm at. I do think, Marcus, that like as I'm warming up to this idea – I still don't think there's any backup or, you know, quarterback that is, is slated to be a backup in 2024 that I'd rather have over Justin Fields. I still think things look grim. I think things look terribly grim. It already seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, that the the Pittsburgh Steelers, if things go well this season, they they seem, you know, like they're they're very amenable to bringing Wilson back on a longer term deal. Wilson also seems amenable to that. It seems like the the Steelers' plan is not to have Justin Fields sit behind Russell Wilson for a year and then give him the opportunity to to win the job. It just doesn't seem like that's the current narrative. So I do think for Justin Fields to you know find some value, you're either going to need an injury or you're going to need you know. Justin Fields to take some leaps and bounds working behind Russell Wilson this season. And I think all of those things are in the realm of possibility to the point that like, I, I definitely think obviously Justin Fields is a must roster type of player. I, I think even in a, a single QB league, I'm still going to be stashing him on my bench if nothing else. And like a, a, what the heck kind of upside player. Um, but it's still, it's still looking grim. <laughs> so Matt, my question for you is like, how long do you hold here? Like if Russell yeah. Wilson's looking really good, let's say into October for the Steelers, like, and it's just very clear that Fields still isn't any closer to starting fields as a free agent, or at least scheduled to be a free agent in 2025. Like how do we proceed with this? Especially if you're in a shorter bench, super flex league. So here's my take on how I expect it to shake out. And who knows if it will or not. We've seen, you know, over 60 quarterbacks start games in each of the last two years. So injuries are obviously going to affect things. They have until May 2nd to pick up his fifth year option or not. I don't think they will. But I do think they will talk to him in the meantime about a Jordan Love-like situation. You know, a year ago, the Packers weren't going to pick up Jordan Love's fifth year option because they didn't know anything about him on the field. So I think there's a chance that Justin Fields get ex extended here and isn't a one and done situation, uh, maybe with a lot of incentives involved. I also think on opening day, he will have a Taysom Hill like role. I think he will get his jersey dirty every week and will come into games 
at times with a Justin Fields package. Wilson's a starter, but I think Fields will play almost the entire preseason and whoever the three is. I don't think that'll be a Wilson role. So we'll see a lot of them then. To your question, we won't see a lot of Wilson, though, during the preseason. Is he good, bad, or what? Um, my hunch is, I know this organization can be a little slow moving with their decisions, but if it's week six and Russell Wilson looks like his first week in, or his first year in Denver, I think they'll put Fields in as a starter. Hmm. Kate, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I'm not going to put anything past this Steelers front office. This is, you know, for as much as we've talked kind of endlessly about Pittsburgh being this very conservative NFL franchise, this ain't your mama's Pittsburgh Steelers right now. Nope. This is Omar Khan's Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> and they, you know, there seems to be an aggressive mindset. And I don't think they're above that right now because I think what the tea leaves for me are reading, especially in 2024 here, they're going all in. And I think they're going all in for a very specific reason. You have Cam Hayward, who is on the final year of his contract and very well could retire. And I think he would retire should this team, uh, you know, end up winning a Super Bowl. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of <laughs> It, 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 I don't know. I, I don't think they're they're against it because if their backs are up against the wall and they think this is their final chance to win a Super Bowl with this group of playmakers on the field, TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, I really think all of these aggressive decisions are stemming from looking at their defensive personnel right now. Yeah, I mean, Russell Wilson, you paid him the veteran minimum. What is there to lose? So, I mean, I don't hate it. I think I'm with you guys. I think like late twenties, early thirties, like that's probably the sweet spot to rank Justin Fields. But like by, by no means am I going out and trying to acquire Justin Fields via trade. If he's a throw in in a super flex league, so be it. But I, the value has dropped so significantly now that it just, he's just not worth much in his trade. So we'll see. We still have a long, a long time before, we get to the preseason before we get to the regular season. Maybe we'll get some news. Maybe there will be a change in pitch, Pittsburgh and we'll have a, a actual quarterback competition. We will we'll see. Uh, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty Football your first listen every single day. Go check out the channel on YouTube. Uh, we are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Matt on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Go check out his new YouTube channel, same name, Williamson NFL, over there. Go follow Kate. On Twitter, at Kate Majuk, I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow discussing Michael Penix, quarterback from the Washington Huskies.